Well, hello everybody. This is Santa Jerry from Santa's Switch Adapted Toys, and you're on the over-the-shoulder camera view while we do an adaption of one of the Fisher Price Linkables toys. This is the Beaver, and it comes. Uh, it's got a switch on it that turns him on, and the way this toy is activated. Oh, hi, Beaver. How you doing today? The way this toy is activated from the factory is you punch his head and his tail wags out because that's a mechanical movement but then the switch inside activates the toy. So I'm going to show you how I adapt them. Now I've already pulled the, there's four screws in the back uh, that hold the body in place. We're not doing anything with the head on this toy. But if I pulled the four screws out we're going to pull it apart. And as you pull it apart you're going to notice it doesn't come apart very well because there's a cable wiring it jumps across there and that is the speaker wire the speaker is in the head of this toy so to make things simple for us we're going to disconnect that got some needle nose pliers and we're going to set that part aside keep the battery kind of it's loose battery pack is loose but we'll kind of keep it in place so that switch activation that I was referring to, let's see what the two components are. This part right here, this part right here, the switch is normally setting here, and then when the head's pushed down, it slides up and activates the switch. And the switch that it's activating is this blue one right here. Okay. So we need to figure out how to attach our wiring to this blue switch so that we can put our uh, adaptive connections and cables on it. And on this side, I don't see any connections on there. But on the other side of that, there is. So I'm going to grab my cordless screwdriver. There's two screws. There's one here, one here. We'll take those out. I'm going to set those in the body so that when the time comes, I remember to put them back in. Okay. When we pull this circuit board forward, this blue switch that the uh, user activates will come out. It's latched on the back side, so you couldn't just pull it out before you remove the board. But we're going to also put that in over there. And now we're looking at the back of the back of the circuit board. Now this is a little hard to see, but here's the switch that we're going to be working with. Okay? It's right there. And on the back side of the circuit board, I'm going to hold this at an angle and hope that that shows up on camera. It's moving really, really close, right? On the back of the circuit board, we've got three points, three solder points that was used. Switch out to a different pointing tool. And so it's got a connection here that was soldered to the board, connection here, and connection here. So we only need two of those, and we need to figure out which two is going to activate our toy. So to do that, I already know that when you come across this issue, you, you need to know. Uh, the music box a speaker has been disconnected because it's in the head, but I'm going to turn the toy back on. Here's the switch for turning the toy on. Turn it down. The moment you turn the toy on, it would have been making noise, except like I say, the speaker is disconnected. Speaker is. But the LED lit up. So let's see if we can't make that LED light up, because then we know that the toy is working. And I'm going to touch these two, the left two together, and see if that makes a connection. That did not turn that LED on. We're going to connect up the right two, and that turned the LED on, so we know the toy is now activated. So those two connections on the right side are the ones that we need to hook our wiring to, our cables to. Okay, so I'm going to move this down here. I'm going to turn the toy back off. 
the connection or the location that I like to use is as close to that switch as possible and in this case it's I'm going to drill a hole into here okay so I've got a hole my drill setting in here my drill motor if I'm careful about it I can put the hole in without any further damage get rid of the debris and one of my cables <clears throat> so my cables that I use are stereo cables and I have I'll link a video down or a link to a, a video down in the comment section on how these are made up a stereo cable has three wires on it one's common the other two are either left or right speaker I suppose ear, ear set and you need to make sure that these are properly identified if you end up with a wire that's you're turning from stereo to mono bring over my magic box you're turning from stereo to mono you need to make sure that these common wires are connected and it's not shorting out because if it was shorting out let's see we have both lights lighting up these two lights that are lighting up on this box represent the in this case the white and the yellow the common one is the red one when you get a stereo cable and you're going to convert to mono you may or may not have the same color scheme and even if you do the colors mean nothing as far as which one does what when it comes to hooking them up so be very careful make sure that you're not crossing those wires when you uh, connect them up uh, again there's a, a link in the video as to how to how to determine what those are so I'm going to put it through the hole I need about an inch or so to go behind the uh, circuit board and the path I'm going to use let's pull that circuit board back up out of the way it's kind of caught on that uh, there's a real registration button there that helps hold it in place and I'm going to use the path that sends the cable up and around the top like this and then back to my connections okay so to keep the strain relief on the cable I'm going to tie a knot in it now, tying a knot in it is my preferred method I used to use zip ties I know that a lot of people use zip ties but I discovered that they fail they sometimes snap and break and then your strain relief is no longer strain relief it allows the cable to be pulled out and that is not good so I've got I'm going to verify I'm going to pull it back in in a moment but I'm verify that I have room to do what I want to do good so now let's solder it up let me push that all this fiddling here I know it on the camera probably looks a little, a little goofy but so I'm not sure I'll be able to zoom in on this in fact I you're, you're, you're just gonna have to trust me <laughs> on uh, what the connection points are but you now know if you've especially if you've opened up the toy and you're convinced you're gonna do this you kind of already know what uh, where you're connecting to we're connecting to the right two uh, solders on there um, I always use uh, my, my soldering wires are tinned makes them ready to go on and so I've got the right one hooked up now we're going to go to that middle one I think I'm going to use some tweezers to hold the wire down on that if I can for some reason my ability on tweezers just doesn't seem to be working real well but I'm pretty sure it'll work this well enough we'll solder on there heat up the solder heat up the connection point and a slight tug on the wires individually Yep, nice and solid. So let's check our toy before we reassemble it. Below the uh, table here I've got my uh, switch mounted. So 
without having sound as our benefit, we're going to be looking for this LED to light up. So we're going to turn the toy back on. The LED lights up because it's going to start mode. When the LED stops going, we're going to turn, I'm, going, I'm sorry, we're going to push my uh, adaptive switch and it lit up. So it's running through the cycle, it's running just fine. We'll wait for that to time out. And when it times out, we will, uh, when it times out, it's still going. <laughs> okay. It's running a predetermined program, doing a, doing a good job. So, I think it's trying to reach out to the rest of the Linkables and it's not connecting. When it times out, we will then also punch the factory switch. Push the button there. And yes, we verified that that still works. So this is now successfully adapted with a switch and retains the ability for factory switch to work by pushing the head down and activating it. All of my toys, if I can possibly do it, I try to make sure that the factory switches are as functional as the adaptive switch. So we'll put that back in, line it up. Oops. So remember what I was saying about leaving those parts here. This makes it a benefit because now I re remembered I have to put that on before I line it back up into the into the case. But where is it? There it is. Now we can put the screws in. And I, I'm, I'm very confident this is going to work, so I don't need to test it with the music. Um, but before I reassemble it completely, we will be testing it with music. So, test it with music is to take this and plug it back in. See why we moved that out of the way. This would have been a pretty short uh, space to work in. Kind of cramp, kind of cramped up. Okay. So now let's uh, turn the power on. Something I, I did something wrong. Hold on a minute. Did I not turn the power on? Oh, I turned it off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we've turned the power back on. And we'll set this together. Check it with the... Yes, factory switch works. Okay. Hi, Beaver. All right. And while Beaver's going... I will uh, tear up a couple of screws. Alright, so that's been. Now we're going to push the adaptive switch. Perfect. This toy is ready to go. Alright, thank you folks for watching this video. That's uh, us. Oh, yeah. So this is Santa Jerry with uh, Switch Adapted Toys and how to modify the beaver. Thank you for watching.